Welcome to JTAC Show. Today I have the honor, the privilege to interview Peter Artesella. Yay! <laughs> Peter, I know that you are a painter, a writer, a screenwriter, an actor, a voiceover actor, and a passionate sailor. It's true. <laughs> it's all true. Thank you. You're everything. <laughs> you do a lot of things just like any would your wife. Yes, yes. We, uh, we found each other not by chance. It's because we love the each same things we love ourselves so much that we could only find somebody who was exactly like us and, and then we fell in love and they are amazing both of them they are super super peter what was the alarm clock that woke you up to your real you and to your real life the fact that i was very unhappy doing what i was doing and the first pre-alarm uh, clock to that was that I was very I was good at what I was doing and I looked around and I saw the people that I would have become 10 years 15 years down the road and I had zero interest I felt no interest no uh, kinship no desire no curiosity nothing and so I that started the questioning process so then what am I doing here now yeah, and yeah, yeah, why yeah. am I here now yeah. and, and from that moment it was just a couple of years later before or maybe three years later before my life changed yeah. Wow how did you find your big purpose in life hmm. I found it when I realized that it's a lot better to be happy than unhappy yeah, yeah. So, of course. So I think that that is my purpose, to be happy. And uh, when I am that genuinely, fully and completely, uh, not only that is best for me, but I become a living example for Other people everybody else. To so, imitate you. Uh, mm. It becomes good for everyone. everyone. Yes. yes. Your family have been managing Grand Hotel Rimini for many years. Mm -hmm. Were you born there? I was born in Bologna, but just for a technical reason, just because my parents liked the hospital and the doctors there. Okay. So when my uh, mother was expecting me, they just jumped in the car and drove to Bologna. Uh, they delivered me and then I just got back to Rimini. So it was a technical thing. Federico Fellini. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're talking about the world-famous director, Federico Fellini. Uh, he always went there when he was going back to his native town. Mm. And he was one of your family's best friends. Mm. Do you have any memory about him? Yes, I was a, uh, well, I was a, a child and he was a big man. Uh, and um, I remember at all, every time I met him, he always had this uh, thing that he did uh, inevitably whenever something did not interest him he would immediately either cut away walk away excuse himself mm -hmm. um, find something else to say Wow he was focused he was uncompromising about the things that interested him which wow. is exactly what his art is he never compromised um, because there wasn't enough money or they couldn't get the actor or the cinematographer or the script uh, he always went for only what he felt was good for him because I believe that that's what made him happy so uh, he was uncompromisingly going after what he liked you know, what made him happy mm -hmm. and uh, that's what I remember. Maybe yeah. it's one of the reasons for his world success. Yes, absolutely. I, th I think everybody who exists at a, a level of uh, continuous production in the groove of their heart, of their vision, it, you know, follows a path that is similar. Like they, they follow what makes them feel good from Mother Teresa to uh, Federico Fellini. Uh, when people say that, you know, oh, look at Mother Teresa, she suffered so much. I always thought, this is the only thing that makes her happy. 
Yeah. If you put her as the CEO of uh, Apple, great, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, she's going to be miserable. Yeah. This is the Absolutely. only thing that makes her happy. I agree with you totally. Yeah. Yeah. For some time, you worked as a financial operator. Yeah, I was okay. in mergers and acquisitions. Commuting between banker. New York City and Milano, and my question for you is, how could an artist like you possibly choose to live such a kind of life? Maybe at that time you didn't realize, you hadn't realized uh, the kind of person you are, you are meant to be yet. Yeah, yeah. I lived to please my family. Okay, uh, okay. I hadn't really, I very early on I uh, realized that if I was allowing myself to be fully myself I was either punished or I was upsetting you know the universe around me of my of my parents so I learned to please yeah. uh, and when it came time to choose what to do with my life I didn't have I don't know I, I didn't have me mm. to ask me mm. what do I really want to do so I did what they wanted me to do because that was the next best thing to do. Mm -hmm. But then again, a few years later, I found myself doing what I was doing well, uh, but not being happy I was at what I was doing and also looking at the people that were doing it and saying, I don't have anything in common with these people. Wow. <laughs> How did you wake up to the possibility of being an actor? What happened that inspired you to the point of deciding to make such a change in your life? I went to therapy. Wow, uh, and this is the best part. Yeah, <laughs> I went to therapy and, and uh, uh, that's what I always say. I graduated in business administration, summa cum laude. Uh, I became a successful investment banker, then I went to therapy. I became an actor, I sold everything, and I moved to the States. Wow, yeah. amazing. Uh, amazing. Yeah, because you had a, a courage that not anyone finds so easily. How did you find the courage? Because many people live their entire lives, you know, hoping that something falls from the sky, but it's not like that. Yeah. So, it's funny. How did you do it? People ask me this, but I, I never felt either fear or the need to have courage. It felt like the only thing I could do. Wow. So I was just doing my thing. Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I, I remember, you know, friends saying, but are you sure? I mean, your family here and this and that and the business, it's going really well. You're going into something you've never done before. What are you doing? Uh, but it was just blah, 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 blah. I, I just, the only thing I heard and felt was what I was feeling. And what I was feeling was certainty about what I had to do. You are such an inspiration, Peter. I'm sure that our followers are just, oh, you know, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. thinking maybe if he found the courage to do it, I can find it too. Yeah, so it, it's, I wouldn't call it courage, I would call it clarity. So. When you, when you find that clarity, everything becomes very easy. clear and yeah. easy and yeah. fast. Yeah. Things happen and very it flows. quickly. It flows, yeah, and you wow. make it flow. Yeah. And there's no thinking, there's no, oh, it, it just woof. Does it mean that the circumstances are easier or something happens during your walk towards your goal? It's, How does it work? Yeah, I, I, I never said, oh, I found my purpose in life. I just, I just felt, oh, this feels good. Oh, wow, this, this is makes a different me perspective. This makes me good. happy, so I'm going to be doing this. Yeah. And then the following day I get up and I feel the same thing, so I keep doing that. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. and then I feel more pleasure doing it, more happiness and mm, more mm, ins mm. inspiration, and mm. I feel more connected to it, mm. and so I keep doing it, and I keep doing it. So the barometer, if the English word is... Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. is such happiness. I mean, yeah. where you feel... Good. Yeah. You are in the right place at the right time with the right people doing yeah. the right thing. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I'm inspired. <laughs> ah! <laughs>